take in the air, take in the air, appreciate the workings of the spirit, cloudy chaos, and uh, maybe have a nice cream. It's like God's almost playing with us because after that, um, all the horror that we saw last week, the weather has just been like this dreamy, surreal, you couldn't ask for a more beautiful nights, could you? No. I mean, it's, it's almost like God's raining his wrath down because it's like his holy days right now. He's, play, he's playing Din and Hassad, you know, he's kind of like uh, giving his judgment and giving his mercy in the same time, you know, saying this is the wrath and this is the horror of me. Behold it, but uh, on the flip side, this is uh, this is my time, and and be at ease with yourself, and be at peace, and here's a beautiful starry night to warm your heart, and you know, that kind of thing. Madmen speak, and madmen listen. I shouldn't expect any sane man to understand my perceptions or accusations. <laughs> Not allowed to come onto my land, and the promised land is the higher state of consciousness that God promised to those who would conquer the land, and so that's what Moses taught. So now, the Kabbalah tells them this. The Kabbalah implies it, and only if you know the mystery can you take it out. That because you come from the Middle East, or they're they're not. It's the all era. Okay. That's all I mean. They do not meaning. see the okay. universal epic meaning of Judaism. Okay. The true meaning of Judaism is that God is bringing Buddhist, Christian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, everyone. These are all the true children of the Haya Israel. Everyone who is standing alive when this new age is born and this age is dead is the, the present age has passed away, is a true child of Israel, is a true Jew. And so the day will declare it. So do those in Judaism know that the world is, are the, the world as a whole are the chosen children of God? Not no, not the zealots, okay. not the orthodox. Okay. But many in Judaism do know that. There are reconstructionists in Judaism who understand that to be a true Jew is to be a true Buddhist. And they, but they have a little trouble with Christianity because we haven't got our act together yet. But sure, they understand the higher esoteric dimensions of the teachings of Moses. And there are many people who are not in the Orthodox tradition who see the esoteric dimensions of the Torah. Maybe not perfectly, but they understand that us Jews are not the most uh, chosen and that, as a matter of fact, maybe sometimes we uh, look like we're the least chosen because of the way we behave. Because you see, the true attitude of a Jew is, is uh, the attitude of the heart, not whether we're flesh and blood Jews or not. It's whether we behave as Jews. And that's what this is saying. This is and it says here, put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get ye down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Everybody, particularly here in America, we have to decide who we're serving. Whether we're serving God or serving man. Whether we fear God and the things that God can do, or whether we fear man, whether he puts us in jail or something, because we won't fight his wars. So that's why the scripture says, no great, when John the Baptist came, the scripture says of him, no greater love than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Then it says, and herein is our love perfected that we stand bold in the day of judgment. So we must stand bold against this system. We must not allow them to take any of our children, our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters to go away and die in the battlefields of this world because God is rising now in the sum of all natural and human events <coughs> and getting ready to bring the judgment of God. So are you saying that we should buy our time and we should let judgment be the Lord against Bin Laden? Don't go to war against us? Oh no, we're not allowed to. Bin Laden is an instrument of God. Bin Laden, see there are no powers but them which are ordained of God, the powers that be are of God. God has raised Bin Laden. God has raised Bin Laden as a judgment against Babylon. 
And that's, see, all of Islam in the East and all of Christianity in the West are mirror images of each other. Those who read the Quran incorrectly in the East are a mirror image of those who read the Gospels incorrectly in the West. Those who read the Quran correctly in the East are an image of those mystics and Sufis and true Christians and true Jews who read their text correctly in the West. So did God raise Bin Laden or did God is responsible Christians for all the evil in the world. The scripture says, I am the Lord, there is none other. I form the light, I form darkness, I create evil. I, the Lord, do all of these things. The Apostle Paul said, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, there is no terrorist like God. So there's no devil. The devil is us, the devil is man. Absolutely. And if we're not conquering, fighting the devil, then we look at evil in other places. We, he thinks Bin Laden is evil. He doesn't see God in Bin Laden. He should be fighting the evil in himself. That's the only war we're allowed to fight. That's why it says here, and there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Well, what that means is there's a remnant in our time who have fought the first and essential war that we're allowed to fight, and that's the war against myself, against yourself. That's the only person I am allowed to rule over with rigor and force is me. I am not allowed to rule over you. I'm not allowed to make war over you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against Bin Laden. He's raised up by God. He's a slave of God. All of Islam is in absolute bondage. They bow down five times a day. Here in the West, we must stand upon our feet as sons and daughters of God. And it's here in the West that we can understand the mysteries of these things. You see, Islam is in darkness. When Muhammad took his flight, his night flight, to the furthest mosque, which means this is where Islam is coming to perfection right here. Well, it was a night flight. Muhammad could not interpret the flight he was on. He just was obedient to obey the mysteries, the, the, the voice of Gabriel, the voice of God. And he had his helpers recite, but he couldn't interpret. And it takes an insightful Muslim as it takes an insightful Christian to see the underlying meanings of the scriptures. So the first, you open up the book of, uh, of uh, the Quran, the very first surah is made up of seven verses. And it talks about the Lord of all worlds and the Lord of judgment. Because you see, true Islam, is coming to perfection right here. The true Muslim warriors are coming to perfection right here, and they are warriors who fight with this, not with swords, not with guns, not with killing other human beings. They fight with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so now there is war to be made, and you'll find that the true holy warriors here in the West are those who will wage war with these scriptures and begin to steal souls back away from these guys. But in the East, God is rising up in all of those powers in his terrible, fierce personality. That's why Bin Laden comes out of the East. That's why Russia is there and China. All of those nations are warrior nations preserved by God to bring a judgment against the most powerful empire that ever existed. That's why Revelation 13 says of America, who is like the beast? Who can make war with the beast? And the beast, of course, being America, is the most powerful empire that has ever existed on the face of history. And so now we see that God is now coming against it. And so they're the good guys over here. What's that? They're the good guys and we're the bad guys. What's that? No. No. No, there's a good, there's a good on both sides. There's evil on both sides. Yeah, there's evil on both sides. See, it, it, He's telling you that the Father is rising from the East. Yes, that's the symbol of the ram. Yes, the Father is raising from the East, and He has been in power over the land for decades. But now the mother of the earth, see, God is, is male and female by His theory, He's male yeah. and female. And now the it woman is rising and she's going to give birth to, to, to the Messiah. But the Messiah uh, is so not an actual physical entity. It's, it's our conscious becoming aware no, of no, our responsibility as human beings, as God. Because God is within us. So, so he's so 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 so
Do I have dreams? Well, uh, no, not in a, in a long time. Uh, most of uh, just filling in, like, I'll go one time and I'll need to fill in these little spots. You'll need to fill in that. And everyone's just kind of filling in their own thing. Yes. It's a completion. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's all illusion. You see, the yep. outer the outer things are illusion. Yep. It, you, you see, the, the yep. scripture, we live in a four-dimensional time-space illusion. The soul, the soul really is invisible. Is what's right. traveling through that matrix. Yes, exactly. And here we are. And uh, what an exciting time to be alive in the history of humankind. Yeah. To see the things we see. And the best thing. Oops, go ahead. I spoke earlier of an apex that we're all approaching when everyone will experience time together and we'll all evolve into a Christ consciousness. And you spoke of it as if it were coming soon. It is. And I wonder if it's already come for you, but it's coming for most of us collectively. Uh, it's coming to the point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Will we pass through? Are we going to live yeah. us, our bodies, as we are? Oh, yeah. Well, if passing out of this dimension into the other dimension, the parallel universe, who knows what the body looks like over there? Maybe it'll have four arms, like uh, Vishnu and, and Shiva, you know? Uh, some divine form will uh, possess us and, and give form to whatever we're going to look like over there. But at the same time, if we are still here on the earth as we pass through the vortex and we appear at the, uh, in, at the morning of the new age, well then we'll still be in this body, but the mind will have been so thorough altered it that you won't realize you're the same it. person yeah. you won't be the same person yeah. so it's the mind that is this is all happening inside the mind this is it's all happening at various levels of human consciousness as we all attain to this perfection we all start coming to this same point and we start meeting all others who are approaching that point and we find that the fellowship is light is now intensifying just as it is at this time in history. The light is so intense it's in our time. Growing and growing. And, uh, absolutely. This darkness can't stand. This, no. this, those, that system is, is collapsing. And uh, they're going to bring their destruction upon their own head. But they don't realize what they are creating uh, uh, by facilitating the darkness. They're creating the light. Uh, the re our resistance to the darkness is actually facilitating the birth of light, the birth of understanding in the uh, in the world, and it's happening in such a wonderfully intense, uh, unfolding way. And it's painful, but it's waking up. And waking up is always painful. It's experienceful. Yes, it's painful or wonderful. It's experienceful. That is a good way it's of putting like, it. Yes. We're all little bits and pieces of God, and it's just experiencing itself. So no matter if you do bad or evil, you're still going to go to the light, and not going to be punished. Well, you see. The children of Israel, they went down into the Red Sea. And when they went down into the Red Sea, the waters stood up on the side and they came out the other side. The children of Egypt went through the same waters, but they came up destroyed. So no matter what a child of light does, whether it's good or bad, it will work towards the good. No matter what a child of darkness does, even if he does good, it'll work towards evil because that's the nature of his spirit. And so all the good that he does will just work towards more, further deception. It'll work towards uh, further enhancement of ego. But when a child of light does something bad, it destroys his sense of self. He becomes um, repentant. He's full of atonement. I have done something bad. I've offended my mother, my lover, my, my, my family. And so it works towards his good. So you're either bad or good in the beginning already? I believe so. Except when we pass through periods of vortex, the, good, the evil can stop being evil and they can change because of the light, the intensity of the light. And in your soul isn't bad, it's just your personality. Right? Yeah, yeah. the soul is, that, is. Right, I know. I just didn't know yeah. if you maybe thought you meant like you could be a bad soul, like you're going to hell or whatever. No, it's, no, just, it's just that your personality at the time was choosing towards lower frequency yeah. vibration. And besides, there's no literal hell. There's no there's real no hell. hell or devil. If, if if there was a if there was a real hell, I would not serve God. If there was a place where people went in eternal torment after they left this mortal coil mm -hmm. and they were burning forever because they were not inspired enough to make the right choices, mm -hmm. then to me God would be a tyrant and and I would not serve God. Mm -hmm. But I know that God is more creative than me. And therefore I know that hell is a metaphor for the human condition. 
and I know that we're all getting ready to be delivered out of the darkness of hell. That's what Christ did. Christ so, what is the, so punishment is not hell. Punishment is you punish yourself. The punishment is is the karma that you bear upon yourself. You to be in a limited cycle pattern of like what you just keep doing that you experience as your version of hell. But when you die, will you still be rewarded the light. Uh, well, if you don't get to heaven this time, you get there the next time. You're eventually We're all everything's heaving to heaven. 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 Even yeah. the yeah. Antichrist is going to be in heaven only ten lower lifetimes from now. Everybody is on the way. See, because the divine spark of God's presence is in everyone, whether it be light or darkness, oh, right. and and every living soul is on its way to heaven, whether in this lifetime or another lifetime. So it's very encouraging. I said, I said, feel good. Everything, yeah. everything is passing yeah. yeah. because God's not going to leave any part of Himself and in, in herself in oblivion as this world burns out and the new world is is living on forever he's not going to have some uh, broken part of him and herself still out there uh, suffering eternal punishment everything will be transformed everything will be saved it all broke apart it's like we're all coming back together again yes it's like yes yeah. yes and if we could just see the atomic mystery that's happening uh, uh, within us Change and the perspective to like a yeah if we could just see the the energy that's passing back we and forth there right now oh yeah all the yeah the light that's passing back that's and forth there. everything is a wave function for you isn't it? Yeah. basically i was telling yeah. them that before it's like mathematics you just yeah. see and feel a lot yeah and, and it was just connecting the wave, yeah. Yeah, the wave. You, once in a while you get thrown from it like i oh, sure. explained the picture thing those pictures that you see that are all graphic things you look at it, it's a bunch of colors you're like what the fuck is this you know and then you look a little longer and all of a sudden a three-dimensional dinosaur that's it yeah when you become aware you see only god and you're like yeah all right, this is looking it good. It all comes you know? together and but everything then, makes sense and you know, everything is You look is at the purpose. picture again at a different time because your your energy level is fluctuating or whatever, then you don't really see the dinosaurs. I mean, you use those pictures. You see one. You know it's a dinosaur. You can look at it five minutes later and be like, shit, now I can't see the dinosaur. Yeah. But when it clicks, you're like, ah, dinosaur. That's God. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. a feel. And, uh, what, what time is it? This is a wonderful night. I know, we night. came to see if you had to take a bathroom break or something. No, I stuff. somehow got to shut down my metabolism. Yeah, I know, because I gave you juice before. I'm like, this yeah. might not be a good idea. Yeah. Gonna no, it was man. wonderful. I'll that tell you, uh, I was so thirsty. 11. Oh, yeah, you're going to leave, what, four hours ago? No, I'm glad I didn't. What time do you start? Huh? When do you start? Well, I, I, I was here before noon this morning, and so uh, I thought I wanted to be here definitely before the sun went down. Okay. And uh, of course, it's Rosh Hashanah, but now okay. it's. Um, we're well into the uh, the holiday, and uh, this is good. So I'll be able to see you. Uh, Amin is getting. To, uh, 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 she's gonna go, but if you stay, I want to stay. Well, uh, just whatever's is, doing. Is David just, okay with uh, people crashing on the floor? I, oh, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mike said maybe not. Mike said what? He said maybe not. Oh no, I think he would be. Okay. Yeah. Should I go a beer? That's up to you. <laughs> Whatever you do will be good. <laughs> the, the reason, the reason I grew a beard is because it says in the scripture, if any person takes a vow to God, 25 years ago I made a vow to God that I would seek the wisdom of God. And so God says, okay, the conditions for that is that you take a vow of separation. So in the sixth chapter of Numbers it says if a person separates themselves a vow unto God they must agree on certain conditions one is not to partake of any alcoholic beverage not to partake in the fruit of the vine any grapes and neither to cut the hair of their head until the conditions of their vow are, are complete so I made a vow with God that I would not cut my hair until I could look into the face of the messiahs and bow at their feet. And then I knew that, then I would know that God is through with me, my work is over, and, um, and, you can so, shave. and, and then I can <laughs> shave and I can sit down with my friends and pop a big, nice bottle of wine and... and, uh, and so, and, do you eat pork? Do I what? Eat pork. No, I don't eat any meat, but I do every once in a while if I'm sitting in the house, of a, a friend and, and someone else, and especially poor people, they don't have the consciousness to stop eating meat. And if they invited me to the table, I would eat what's so on that table. So you should eat pork, but I should eat pork? Pardon me? Should I eat pork or not? It, it's, it's up to you. No it's up to you because... So don't, you don't eat pork. No, I, I don't eat it. Um, maybe you know something that I don't know. What do you meat. know that I don't know? No meat at all. Yeah. No, what do you know that I don't know? Nothing, except Nothing. that, you know, see, 
when the scripture says that in the book of Leviticus, it says that we must not partake, and this is why Jews do not eat pork. It says that we must not eat any animal that does not chew the cud and part the hoof. Okay, so well, what's the meaning? So Jews literally follow that commandment. If, a, if an animal chews the cud and parts the hoof, it's clean, and they eat it. If it doesn't chew the cud and part the hoof, it's unclean. So that's why they don't eat pork, because porks part the hoof, but they don't chew the cud. Okay, so now what's the meaning? Well, the meaning is that we must part not partake of the spirit, of any spirit that is not like one who, after hearing the word of God, does not go and sit somewhere and ruminate on it. Okay, I've heard this teaching. So now I go sit somewhere and I swallow it, I bring it back up, I think about it, I bring it back up, I chew on it, I chew on it, and all of a sudden, if it sounds correct, if it touches the true chords in my heart, now I change my ways. So that means parting the hook. And so what I do, uh, what that means is that when we think about one of God's teachings, we probably think we, we should think about it to perfection. Once we understand the meaning of it, then we part ways from our old way to our new way. So that's the meaning of what is kosher and what is not. So the Apostle Paul said, once you understand those things, once you understand those things, it really doesn't matter if you eat meat or not once you understand the meaning of being clean and kosher. So, it has nothing to do with what you eat because those things that go into the mouth come out the draft. It does not defile a man. What things come out of the man's heart is what defiles him. The, the, the words that he speaks. It's your heart, your thought, actually, your, your train of thought, I should say, pardon me. Your motivation towards your Audio, other fellow human beings, yes. and especially the opposite sex. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's exactly right, the balance. So, it doesn't make a difference. However, yeah. it's a good practice to allow, as we come to our Sabbath, it's a good practice to give the animals their day of rest too, their Sabbath. So that's why I chose not to eat meat, not because it's unclean, but because I want to release the animal from my aggression in the same way God has released me from his aggression. Exactly, yeah. And so that's why I don't eat meat. But if I sat, if I was invited, as I often are, where I live in West Virginia, to the table of a poor person, and they are offering, offering me a meal out of love, and I sit there and there's some chicken or there's some turkey or something, uh, I don't, if it was like beef, I probably would just not say anything about it and pass it up. But, but I would partake just out of love and reverence for this house. I, I know that that can't hurt me. I know, I know it, it can't hurt my soul. So it's, it's just a place of uh, eating, eating meat if you have a certain understanding that you are in fact eating meat. Eating meat? What do you mean? If you're aware that you're... There's some spiritual, I don't know, like, about, maybe it was Paul who said something about uh, what he's saying, he says, he says, all things are clean to those people who are pure. But if somebody suggests to you that the things that you are partaking in, you are partaking in uh, to uh, honor a wrong teaching or an idol, then you should not partake. Like Paul says, I know that if I sit here with this bottle of rye whiskey, it can't hurt me. I can pop this bottle, I can get drunk and praise God all night, and, but I know it won't hurt me. But if I see somebody who doesn't understand what a person can do when they are free in the spirit, then I will not partake. Because if I damage my younger brother by my own freedoms, then what I've done is I've done my brother a disservice because he doesn't understand the nature of the freedom that I have. So Paul decided that I wouldn't drink at all because I can put it off till I get to heaven. Yeah. So he did it just so not to offend other people. But he said, I know I'm free to 
do it. We just, I can do it. It, it. it can't harm you know, my you, soul. It might get people. my body all screwed up and I might get sick and <laughs> throw up all night, but so it won't number one touch again the, is the way I love and God. Three seven love nine, love three I mean, the Hasidic Jews, one, one of the, uh, the when, when they sit around, the they open up the bottle of whiskey and before the night's over, they're singing and stamping and they're getting inebriated and they're singing praises to God and they're dancing and then the heart is merry but of course it's part of their teaching they realize that if they because of their insobriety they begin to hurt other people or become untrue to their spouses then they must stop because they're not doing it to glorify God they're doing it just to uh, appeal to their own uh, lower nature so, so all things are, are free and we can move um, according to the path that each of us find ourselves on some of us don't eat meat but it doesn't mean I can impose that on anyone else you're a man and they're not looking at the inward man and, and they don't understand that because the white race has been chosen by God to somehow be responsible for most of the evil in the world that it is white individuals that must make this atonement. We have to atone for the things that were done here. So they believe that a white man cannot be one with Christ. A white man cannot have a relationship with God because he is naturally made of the devil mm -hmm. and he's pure devil so, so of course so, uh, that's sure. a, a, a that's a doctrine that they will have to um, deal with and it's an imperfect doctrine and they're going to have to repent of those things later on when they see that the fellowship and light in our time is made up of blacks and whites and orientals and native americans and made up of all the races of humankind that these are the ones that god has chosen to uh, bring the age ending message of redemption to the world and then they're going to have to repent of that racial doctrine you see i i, I live in the south where i see a lot of white people with that doctrine Doctrine, that only whites uh, can be chosen of God, you know, the Ku Klux Klan and the uh, Aryan movements. Well, they live in West Virginia and they live in the Midwestern state. And I hear that whole doctrine and I have rejected any racial doctrine at all. Uh, that whites are supreme or blacks are supreme or one is the devil and one is not. <laughs> <laughs> it's the heart. God is looking on the inside. And when I see the divine in you, which I do, I realize, well, white, white men ain't got it. <laughs> there's, there's, there's Christ. And hopefully you would look into my heart and say, well, well, actually, well, the only one that have it. You know, some white guys have it. <laughs> some white guys don't, but some have it. You know, and I hope you would be merciful to me and as God. They can jump. They can jump. I can't. They can jump. I have a gift for you. Oh, God. Thank you. No, no, this Thank is, you. Uh, this is a uh, bye bye, Miss America. Point. It's a this, you know? So, what what God is doing with, with the his judgmental self is he's bringing the wrath, but with his loving self, he's giving birth to the light in the midst of that. And as he brings one system down, hopefully our hearts are changing and molding and the new one is being born. You know? Hi. How are you doing, man? All right. Michael. Luke. Luke, nice to meet you. And we met before. And... What's, uh, what's the name of this? Uh, well, this little... I was going to call him a little guy. <laughs> This, this, this fellow over here, his name is Michael, and but they called um, Paul the little one. Paul means the little one. So um, this is his little thing. Uh, he's big thing and little thing. He's been studying Kabbalah and all the world religions. Yeah, all the world religions for um, 25 years, and things began to come together for him. And he's been standing. I met him about three or four years on this corner. Uh, three or four years ago, and my friend Timmy here uh, met him, and uh, he began to talk to us about things we already were piecing together for ourselves. Um, you know, we knew that we were, in, we knew there was, we were at a time where um, the mysteries and uh, religions were being unfolded. We knew we were being able to transcend the dogmas that we were raised in. Yeah. We knew that we were being able to see the beauty in all peoples and all and all this stuff was happening and we also knew that um, 
there was something we couldn't seem to marry it all to, to the system, to the to the governmental systems. We couldn't be wed to those things because they would seem. To, it seems like whenever you step in that world, it's diametrically opposed to a Christ conscious person or or a Buddha conscious person or you know whatever it is. Um, so we were piecing these things together, and we ran into him, and we invited him back to our house and got to know him. And plenty of people in Union Square have got to know him by now. But he's and they, they live in Virginia, West Virginia. Yeah, he lives in West Virginia. He's got like a lot of grandkids and family down there. And um, basically, that's what he's doing. He's he, he's talking about the age coming to an end and what we have to do, and what what lesson we have to learn, and the birth that's coming and the great mystery of all this and you know trying to bring our minds to the fact that not let's not get caught up in the the, the negative let's um the retaliation of it the retaliation yeah. the, the the only word i heard last week was punishment punishment yeah. punishment the only thing that was going on in my heart was repentance 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 you know what have we done are we guilty did we bring this upon our own heads to oh, yeah. you know but he sat down with Bill Moyers and he did all these these document this interview and they're pretty famous like because they're so beautiful. Bill Moyers was he don't put it in right. He understood the deeper meaning of it all. He wasn't necessarily a top witness, but he was he was on his path. He did his work. And I just ordered the uh DVD because uh, I wanna use clips of it in the well, I wouldn't call it a movie. I just he's, you know, he's like piecing own. together all of this stuff and all these images, different different perspectives that sort of tell the same story. Yeah. You know, so that people can have something visual to look at. Noam you know. Chomsky is really excellent to, uh, listen to, to read. And I think that's what our, our job is now. Is because, you know everybody has a talent, right. and our, what our job probably should be is bringing to light the things we feel in our heart. You know, if you're a painter, by painting it. If he's a video guy, by video, you know, if I, if I sing songs, sing it. If he teaches Kabbalah, teach it. But, you know, because... Uh, but yeah, Kabbalah's uh, the mystical side of... Uh, he wants to get it. <laughs> Don't be self -taught. No, I know, I know. The people from the 60s, you see, there's a lot of negative that came with that, but there's a lot of positive. So the beautiful thing about people from our generation is we can look back and say, you know, your your, your 70 year old parents taught you some beautiful things that the people from the 60s totally rejected and won't listen to. But your parents might reject a lot in their old ways of the, the new wave of things, the new consciousness that happened. So we can kind of look back and say, look, this, conser this conservatism was good for us. And this liberalism is good for us. Yeah, and balance it all out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And essentially, the history of all men, specifically the history of this country, it's all a stage that has set the conditions for the crisis. For, yeah, for the. If, 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 if this was 1940, we were about to go to war with the Germans, my spirit may have been. I guess war, but I may have not felt the same way about well, the system of government. I would have felt like we have freedom. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't ready for the battle to be won. We there, there was plenty of. I'm yeah. sorry to cut you off. That's a good thing to know. In World, during World War One, this country had tons of poverty, tons of socialist um, uh, uh, people, tons of pacifists in different churches, Amish people, Quakers. Um, all sorts of different pacifists that refused to go to World War One. They were against it. Yeah. Mobs beat them in the street. They were thrown in jails. They were, you know, the propaganda was incredible. Uh, what happened? And Woodrow Wilson, Woodrow Wilson waged a war of propaganda to to get us. Just like you see right now, what's happening? People are getting riled up yeah. into uh, belief, flag waving, and and warmongering, and and. Uh, the propaganda will get worse as the resistance gets worse, you know? The whole Boy Scouts were, were I think, a creation of um, of that propaganda, you know? Let's start the Boy Scouts where we can train them young to be... Nazi youth, kind of. Yeah, Mary, you know, the whole thing. But uh, I have to get my pregnant wife hmm. home because... I think so. He says, I implore you 
not to exact vengeance against me. I, I ask you to use non-violent means to settle this conflict. Well, George Bush is not going to be the World Trade Center. And so the judgment proceeds. The judgments proceed. And so we have to decide which system we follow. The, the teachings and the message of Christ, the, the, the teachings of the Buddha, or we follow the teachings and the ways of man. But I don't, I don't see the uh, that uh, people who are in charge and the great masses, masses of people that they wanna, that they are deciding to go away. You are talking about. Uh, so and are going to war? Yeah, they are going to war. Yeah, we're going to war. Uh, That's why the great dividing is happening between the light and the darkness in our time. You see, we're going to war. The children of light are. No, the, ch the darkness is going to war. They're, they're preparing for war, and they're getting ready to meet God in the in the day of the great battle. Here, just open TV, take a. There are what many reasons said. Said. No, but the thing is, Bush is not deciding. Bush is surrounded by the advisors. Why should it be? But, but, but Bush and his advisors have anything to gain from war. Some, some but, of those people are really bright. And they, but they announced already. Some of them are right. They, they announced already. They're, they're smart, but they're not enlightened. Oh, they are not but then the out of war is just big destruction and... Uh, uh, it's the best thing that would happen for his administration can, can, is a war, go out, from his point of view. Uh, well, the best thing for his, for his buddy to make money, yeah, make money that's that's first of all, they don't die when, you know, George Bush doesn't no. die, that's these people don't die, it's you and I who die, okay, yes. yes. and the soldiers. You know, he's already called up uh, the military reserves. That's not a move you make when you don't want to go to war. You want all the, it's one week, we don't have a full investigation, we haven't made one arrest. And he's saying it's a war. You know, he wants a war. And it's a question of how long and how, when it starts. It's not a question of if. Oh, you did? That's why you have to understand what's going on in America, because what's going on in America is... No, 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 no. He's not the making, the only one making the decisions. And the thing is, the, 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 the people around him are war people. He's not a war people. He's just... He's PR person. Yeah. When the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Well, now the fruit is coming to fruition. There is now, in our time, a remnant of individuals who are coming to perfection in the mystery of Christ. And that's why it says, Verily I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it will die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. Well, there is a remnant right here now that is getting ready because of their understanding of the Spirit of Christ within them, are getting ready to offer the evening sacrifice, which is, which is themselves. Whoever is in this earth, see the prophet Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I'm the only one who understands. And the Lord said, No, I have kept me 7,000 who have not kissed the mouth of Baal or kneeled to the idols. That means that there are 7,000 figurative number of males and females, individuals in our time, pardon me, chosen by the Spirit because of the initiations they have already gone through. These are very old souls. These are very ancient souls that have been born in our time. Well, they've been reincarnated. They have come back from past times. They have now come into the world and they've come to help God turn the wheel of Genesis. They are coming to attain the perfection of their own individual journeys in the earth. And so that's why all of the events that happen there are happening again. Everything that happened there, the same conditions that happened at first, are unfolding now. So just as Elijah came in the form of John the Baptist, well that spirit is now returning. And just as John stood at the end of that age, we stand at the end of our age. And just as the Apostle Paul came at the beginning of this age, he was the author of this mystery. So these who are coming from the Jewish side of the Tree of Life, the Messiahs, will usher in the beginning of the coming age. And so now we're talking about... So these the, are our last days, you're saying? Oh, no, we're in, in it right now. What we saw Tuesday morning, what we saw Tuesday morning was the... Well, we've been reading that scripture...
all afternoon, but what we are doing, you see, have come to the time of the high holy days, we see that the world is completely out of balance. We have returned to the meaning of the roots of the tree of life. We see that the tree of life has two sides to it. It has a male side, but it also has a female side to it. Male and female alone constitute the balance of nature. When the male and female come together, then life is engendered. Love is created. Life is engendered. And that's what this is. This is the tree of life. So, we see that for 2,000 years, males have been ruling the earth. And not only that, but the rich have been ruling over the poor, and the powerful have been ruling over the weak. So it says, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in the day of the new moon. The day of the new moon is the day in which the Divine Mother, who is God, has decided, determined, to descend into our field of consciousness and begin to bring forth her next child. And that child is being born in the hearts and minds of millions and millions of individuals in our time. And that's why it says here, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Well, she is descending now to us in the West. She is crowned in the majesty of the universe itself because she is God. And this remnant, the only way these remnant can come to perfection and begin to help God understand this mystery is only those who serve the divine feminine principle of reality. Because when Christianity came to power, not only did the male principle come to power, but the female principle went into occultation, the divine mother went into hiding, and she's allowed males to rule the earth. But now, there was a mystery let loose in the earth today, in those days, the mystery of the Holy Grail. If you're familiar with that mystery, it means that over the course of the first five, six, seven hundred years of Christianity, there was a mystery that was gripping the souls of man. It was the Grail, the sacred Grail, that had to do with the mysteries of Christ. It had to do with the cup that Jesus used at the Last Supper. And all of these nights of the Round Table went out searching and searching for the Grail. Well. The only ones that could find the grail are those who became servants to the Divine Feminine Principle. And because it's the Divine Mother who has the grail in her possession, and she also has the sword, Excalibur. And what that sword is, is the sword that those who become holy warriors are able to use finally as the age comes to an end. And that's why George Bush said that we, Bin Laden is a holy warrior, not in the, not in the spirit of Christ, but in the spirit of darkness. Because the scripture says that God raises up the wicked to slay the evil. So we are the evil. Not we, not you. If you were no, no, evil, you wouldn't even be standing here. Yeah. No, you're a child of light. The scripture says, here, but, but, listen. but of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. For when they, this system, the children of darkness, say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. <clears throat> who are you saying are the children of darkness? Those who are the rulers of the present political order. Right. Those who in the name what of order Christ... What order is, is that you're speaking of? Talking about the Western political, the economic, American. military order. Yeah. Right. The, system, the, in the United States of America, which mm -hmm. is great Babylon. Right. And it says, but ye brethren are not in darkness, that this day should overtake you as a thief. For you are all the children of light. You are the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. If you were a children of darkness, you wouldn't be standing here. This subject would have no interest to you. But it says here, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for our helmet the hope of salvation. So we must put on the armor of faith that God is bringing these things to pass, and love 
not only for God, but for each other, and not only that, for our enemy. The family of life. The family of man, exactly. The children of life must see, be able to see God in all of the unfolding realities of our time, because there is nothing but God. We are all made up of the essence of God's presence. And everything that is unfolding in the earth is a manifestation of the unfolding will of God. And so was that judgment. That's why Paul says, be sober so that you can see and understand what's happening. These men are drunk with power. They're drunk with vain glory, with uh, uh, delusions. They think that they have it in their power to create the world in their own image. And they don't realize that that's what Paul says when they say peace and safety, then the destruction comes upon them. And so this destruction began just the other morning. And the tower, you know, you know the scripture where it says the towers will fall, right? Okay. When the towers fell, that began God's judgment of this age, the end of this age. <laughs> the, uh, uh, George Bush called it the first war of the 21st century. He doesn't realize because he has rejected the law of Moses that God is a God of war. That is his name. That's what Jesus came to tell us. This is the way to behave when the God of war rises up. Walk in peace, walk in holiness, love righteousness, love justice, seek peace and pursue it. You can't speak about peace and then do war. You must speak peace and walk in peace. And so those now who are walking in the spirit are those who are coming to perfection in our time. That's why the scripture says, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not into the way of evil men, for they sleep not unless they have done mischief, and unless they cause others to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and they drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto a perfect day. So the path of the just is the light that is shining now in thousands and thousands of individuals in our time because we are coming to a day of perfection. Oh, Michael, so um, who exactly is walking the righteous path? Each religious say they are. know them by their fruit. Everybody says they are, but how do we know which path to walk? Yeah. You, you walk in the path of Christ. The scripture says, make straight paths for your feet. So we should follow the Catholics. Do all the Catholics. No, say, oh, no, 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 no. You must come out of Follow that. your own light. You come out of it's, all it's the about your connection with yourself and and with compassion and love period it's intuition you already have the truth the truth is already in your heart walk in that truth you see that's the stay out of the religious institutions mm -hmm. of our time because god is getting ready to diminish them that's why it says come out of them there people see what it says here and it says now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous nevertheless afterward, because it yieldeth, if we are chastened, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. It says, therefore, lift, lift up your hands which hang down and your feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way and follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So when we are following peace with all, we are walking in the right path. If we are following the path of retribution, if we are following the path of violence, we are walking in the ways of the wicked. When we are walking in the path of absolute forgiveness, absolute mercy, absolute love for all of God's creation, we are walking in the path of life. You know what this is all about? Yes, except this is a patriotic exercise. They're calling for vengeance. Not all. Some do that. All right, that's good. That's good. I'm not arguing. What we're doing is just waiting for ourselves. I mean, I think that out of that action, most of us walk this way saying, we know what evil was and evil would be to do the same. Well, to us, we need God was attacking you. So it's on both sides. It's both sides. That's the God raises up the wicked to destroy the evil. But wickedness that was done and those that are rising up to destroy it are becoming very clear to those who are not interested in the revenge and okay, interested in following okay, the peace absolutely. That's as exactly both right. being wicked. That's so, it makes yes. the path much yes. more clear. Yes. Make it No. I'll show you. 
We are now observing the high holy days. We are blowing the trumpet in the new moon. We are following the path of the prophets, which said, blow the trumpet in the new moon. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, it is near at hand. And then it says in the same book, But you see what it says here. God is commanding the non-believers to prepare for war. It says, proclaim me this among the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near. Beat their plowshares into swords, and their pruning hooks into spears. But we're God's children, we're supposed to beat our swords into plowshares. But God is telling the non-believers, beat their plowshares into swords, because it's now a time of war. And it says, Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about and let the heathen be awakened and let them come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the nations round about. When you read in the Old Testament, the valley of Jehoshaphat is where the king of Israel told the children of Israel, get away from the battlefield. You have no need to fight in this battle because this is the battle of the Lord. And that's why it says here, Multitudes, multitudes in the Valley of Decision, the day of the Lord is near in the Valley of Decision. Every one of us must decide at this moment and at this time in history whether we fear God or whether we fear man. Whether we are part of the world that God has created or the world that they are trying to create in their own image. And of course, the choices are clear. How long have you been studying this? Well, I, I began this study, I guess, uh, when Jimmy Carter came to the office of the presidency. And I had just got out of 10 years of military service, realizing full well that a person cannot serve violence. And when I came out of the service, it was during the Vietnamese War, 1967. So I slowly found my way into the anti-war movement, thinking, well, that was the man. But then I found that there was a lot of imperfections there. So I, my wife and I moved out to West Virginia. We built a cabin in the woods and we began to live out there. And about that time, then Jimmy Carter came to the office of the U.S. Army. Well, the point is, is that Jimmy Carter comes from this place right here, Georgia, in the southeast, right, in the southeast corner of the United States of America. And if we look into this place, we see what God has hidden all these times. This is the ancient Garden of Eden. Right here where these rivers fall out of this place where the Georgia, Florida, Alabama border come. This river is the rivers that flowed out of Eden. This is where the teachings of Adam left and went out. This is where the fall of man happened 6,000 years ago. So when I was in the service, I was in Jacksonville, Florida, and I read an article written by an old man named L.D. Calloway. He was a lawyer who lived in Florida, right here, and he gave up his law practice, and he spent the remaining years of his life studying the description of the Garden of Eden in the second chapter of Genesis. And he took out all of the topographical and geographical maps of all the places on the earth that made it a, a claim to be the site of the Garden of Eden. And this was in the 1960s, while I was still in the military. And all of a sudden, he came to the conclusion in a book called In the Beginning that the only place on earth that fit the description of this place was this river system that came out of the Georgia, Florida, Alabama border. And he said that by bringing us back this way, God brought us back to the Garden of Eden. And then, all of a sudden, when Jimmy Carter came running into office, and I began to say to myself, a born-again Christian who is trying to become the most powerful man on the face of the earth? Well, what does the scripture say? That when Jesus went up to the mountain to be tempted, Satan appeared to him, 
and said to him, If you will fall down and worship me, I will give to thee all the kingdoms of the earth and the power thereof. And Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and only him shalt thou serve. Well, when Satan, which is Jimmy Carter's own lower nature, came to him and tempted him, he took the deal. And so, in the name of Christ, he is now rising up in the earth, overturning the teachings of Christ, which makes him an antichrist. And so, from that point on, little by little, the teaching, the mysteries, just began to fall in place. I was living in a cabin in the woods. I had a good wife who let me have all the time I needed. And I studied and I found the doctrines of the Bible, the tree of life. All of a sudden, the dragon appeared. Wow, all the pieces started falling together. You see the dragon? Take a look. I don't see if we can see it in this light. Take a look at the continent of Europe. You see that the continent of Europe is a great big dragon with its mouth wide open? See the tongue sticking See the tongue sticking out of the dragon's wide open mouth? Europe is the head. Scandinavia is the right limb of this great Leviathan. Asia Minor is the left limb. And all of Asia is the body and the tail of this great dragon. The prophets told us that when we came to the high holy days in the western ends of the earth, when the Divine Mother descended to us again and began to bring forth her child, and that child is a state of higher consciousness, it's a whole new age, that she would begin, because she is wisdom, she is God. God is not just Father, but God is Mother and Father. And the Father is rising up in the East and bringing a judgment against the Western world. And the Mother is here in the West bringing forth a child, which is a whole coming age. And so all of this symbolism and these ideas began to just, you know, just quickening my sense of things. And so for the last 26 years, I've just been stealing wisdom from everybody. Did you study into this? Of that order? Yes, because when I began, because I used to teach history in high school. When I came out of the Navy, I went and then I gave that up because I realized you can't serve the system. You know, you got to go out and be an honest person, work with your hands. And so I understood a little something about history. And when I began to see the dragon and I began to understand the things that happened in World War One, it was just an immediate connection to the affairs of the American Empire. Woodrow Wilson before the in Central Europe. And then Jimmy Carter was here. And so finally it was just a matter of putting little pieces of the puzzle together. Where are we right now? With uh, Bush and all this. Yeah, well with Bush we've come to the fullness of time and the end of the age. We've come to right here. This number seven symbolizes the end of this age and we're all experiencing this shift in consciousness because it's from the feminine side of the tree of life. I know you can't see this now. But it's from the feminine side, which is also the Jewish side, is coming the anointed ones and the messiahs. And in order for this to be born, this coming age, this age must come to its conclusion. And um, I, you're familiar with the verse about the towers fall, right? I'm not really. Okay, well, Isaiah 30 says, see, we are blowing the trumpet in the new moon. The new moon is a symbol of the sign of the return of the feminine principle to her rightful place in the balance of things. And so, the prophet Isaiah, looking, now we are divided, Christian from the looking of this political order, God will bring us all together. And when we are brought so, sorry, this chart is the part of the oh, yeah. Of course, because when you take the tree and understand that this is where we are, and the place number three, when you take the tree of life, you lay it down, and you study it from east to east and east to west. This is the west, this is the east. And you see the player where John the Baptist appeared right here? Well, this, right when it appeared 2,000 years ago, well, Jubilees later, in the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad was carried up into the seventh heaven. He was carried in his spirit to the Day of Judgment. And that's why when you open up the Quran, the very first surah in Quran is made up of seven verses. And those seven verses carry the wind of Islam to the western ends of Earth and to the real that to be a Christian is to be a true Christian, to be a true Muslim Christian. As the as as elements that are here, so the gospel hidden by Benjamin Sapphire. Exactly. There are